I'm not ashamed to own my Lord, nor to defend His cause. Maintain the honors of His word, the glory of His cross. Hello, I'm James Brown, and on behalf of the Eastern Church of Christ, located in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to welcome you to Thursday's edition of Walking Through the Bible, a podcast where we seek to study the Bible and the Bible alone. Please stick around afterwards for information on how you can contact us. But for now, if you have your Bible with you, please turn to the book of Genesis and we'll turn the time over to Jeremy Disekamp for our study of the day. Thank you, James, and welcome to all of our viewers. This is the ninth lesson in our study of Genesis. Yesterday we covered Genesis chapter 1, verses 20 through 23, discussing the fifth day of creation. If you missed that episode and would like to watch it, you can find it and all of our other podcasts on our website at www.eastendchurch.org. You can also find them on our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash eastendchurchofchrist, under the Walking Through the Bible Genesis playlist. Today we're going to begin with Genesis 1, verse 24, and read through verse 25. The text that you'll see on the screen is from the English Standard Version, but you're welcome to follow along with any version that you have. So let's now read Genesis 1, beginning at verse 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. As we've seen thus far in this chapter, there has been a progression with God's creation. We started with nothing. Then we saw how God created all of the systems needed for life on this earth to exist. After he made those, he created plants, then fish and birds. But as of yet in our study, there was nothing created that would live primarily on the land. So God created creeping things. These are small animals that live on or in the ground. We sometimes refer to these as bugs. He also created livestock and the beasts of the field. Basically, he created on the sixth day every other type of animal that roams this earth. Again, he created them to reproduce after their kind, meaning that he did not use evolution to accomplish creation. And since we've seen this phrase, after their kind, or according to their kind, repeated so many times in this chapter, now would be a good opportunity to discuss what this phrase means. After their kind means that when animals reproduce, they will produce the same type of animal as them. Hippos will give birth to hippos, and bears will give birth to bears. Contrast this with what science teaches. In your science textbooks, you'll read that every living creature on this planet has evolved from a common ancestor over the course of the last 3.8 billion years. The evidence used for these conclusions is DNA. And the reason these conclusions are so powerful to many is because when you look at DNA, we do share a certain portion of our DNA with monkeys and apes and even bananas. So the theory presented is that the reason for this shared DNA is that as we evolved, we, of course, kept the DNA of our past ancestors but our DNA has changed in other regards, which is why you see such a diversity of life on this earth. This sounds good on paper, which is why many in this world, and sadly many people who claim to be religious, accept this theory as fact. But that our DNA is shared with other living things shouldn't surprise us and isn't definitive proof of evolution. In fact, if there was a common creator, God, isn't that what we'd expect to see? It is said that DNA is the backbone of life, and accepting this is true, why would we then expect that God would have to create unique DNA for every living thing that he created in order for us to believe in creation? If animals have similar structures, like sight and digestive systems, it would be logical that a creator would use similar DNA for both. To bring it into terms that we see every day, look at a car. Every car made by Ford Motor Company is not the same. But if I were to look under the hood of a Ford Mustang and a Ford Taurus, I would see similarities in areas because both cars were made by Ford. The same is true with life on this earth. Similarity in DNA doesn't prove a common ancestor. It is further evidence for a common creator. In the end, though, what makes us different to a banana? 
that 50% difference in our DNA. The Bible teaches us that animals reproduce after their kind. Can animals adapt to their environment? Yes, that is something that is undeniable. But that is not the evolution between kinds. It is adaptation within kinds. The fact remains that bears still remain bears before and after the adaptation. Science has never and will never show otherwise, because God created this universe just like Genesis 1 says. With that, our time is up for today. Please join us, Lord willing, tomorrow when we will continue our study of Genesis, beginning with Genesis 1, verse 26. Thank you, Jeremy. And to our viewers, we also thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Should you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment below or email us at answerintheword at gmail.com. We'll try to respond to you as quickly as we can. We hope you'll join us, the Lord willing, tomorrow when we'll be continuing our study of the book of Genesis. Goodbye for now and have a great day. I'm not a